A look at Disneyland history will show you that the original Snow White Scary Adventures was quite different from the ride that we know today. Walt Disney once famously stated that Disneyland will never be completed. It will continue to grow as long as there is imagination left in the world. Just how much has Snow White's Scary Adventures changed? Well, hello there. My name's Jeremy, and welcome back to Freeform Disney, where I talk about all aspects of Disney, from the animated movies to the theme parks to Star Wars, Marvel, Pixar, the TV shows, and everything in between. That's why it's Freeform. And of course, keep coming back every day for my new daily content. And if you're not subscribed yet, don't forget to hit that big ol' red subscribe button. Now, on to today's topic, Disneyland history. Big changes to Snow White's Scary Adventures. While I'm making this video, it's February 2020, and Snow White's Scary Adventures in Disneyland is currently closed for a major update. Only its second truly major overhaul, and the first major one since 1983. We don't expect it to be anywhere near as big as that 1983 overhaul. And of course, it's also been changed many times throughout the years because Disney, as Walt said, continues to go ahead and make tweaks throughout the years, continues to improve, continues to change. Think of this year's change as like a major cosmetic surgery and the other ones, you know, being Botox injections. It does have an image to maintain to be the fairest one of all. So just what have some of those major changes been? First, for some context, the original ride opened with the rest of Disneyland on July 17th in 1955, and like everything else, it had been rushed and put together in nearly a year. The designers had a plan for the ride and then essentially had to force it into a building that hadn't quite been designed for it. They also had to cobble together some of the sets and props from whatever they could scrounge up. Apparently, they even had to paint directly on the plywood walls at times. And even with all of that scrambling, they pulled off an impressive ride. So impressive that it was a little too scary for some of the guests going to the park. So what's the first major change? Back in the day, guests didn't expect the ride to be scary. It was originally called simply Snow White and Her Adventures. The word scary wasn't even used. The view you would have as a guest coming up to the ride would be of a medieval tournament tent which were all throughout Fantasyland at the time. And that made it so you were more in mind of going to a carnival or a renaissance fair, a festive mood. And then finally, there was the mural itself in the loading bay. The main central part of it focused on Snow White and the dwarfs, and while you could see the Huntsman, the Evil Queen, and the Hag in the background, it still felt very much happy and joyful. And all of this ended up leading to a false expectation in the minds of many of the guests as they prepared to get on the ride. Sometime around the 70s, Disney added the word scary in parentheses after the name of the ride, on the tickets at least. A sign was also added to go ahead and warn guests about the ride being scary. And in the 1983 major overhaul, they changed the name of the ride forever to Snow White's Scary Adventures. No more mystery about how scary the ride was. Then the outside appearance also changed in that 1983 overhaul. No more Renaissance feel. Instead, the outside was now the Evil Queen's Castle. And as you went into the queue line, you saw a section of dungeon behind bars. The feel of the queue line is radically different when you're now inside that castle. And the mural background in the loading bay was no more. They tore it down. Now there was a three-dimensional dwarf's cottage. With all of these changes, guests no longer enter the ride expecting some happy, light-hearted ride, even if it is located in Fantasyland. And the rest, as they say, is Disneyland history. So what about the ride itself? The first big change I want to talk about is Snow White. In the original, the idea was that you were Snow White, and the guests were seeing the ride through her eyes. Although there were times that this was stretched a little little bit, with some odd decisions like Snow White choosing to go to the Evil Queen's castle instead of the Dwarf's Cottage, which was right in front of her. I suppose you can blame that on building an entire theme park in one year. Nevertheless, that was the idea they were going for, and it largely works. So Snow White was nowhere to be seen within the ride. 
And that actually led to a lot of confusion for guests riding it. And so in 1983, when they did the big overhaul, Snow White was put into the ride in the first major scene as we see her going up the stairs to go to bed in the dwarf's cottage. And that's actually the only time she appears, at least currently. One other change was to bring in Snow White by bringing the actual original voice of Snow White from the movie, Adriana Castellotti, into the ride in 1983. So now, at least we get to see and hear Snow White in the ride. I appreciate what the Imagineers were going for, but I can certainly see how bringing Snow White into the ride was probably the better choice. The original ride also didn't start out in the Dwarf's Cottage like we're currently used to. It actually started out right off the bat in the mine. And the mine seems like it was a much bigger portion of the ride back then. We would have gone in, seen an endless mine shaft, got into the vault, seen the dwarfs at work, and then start leaving the vault and we see Dopey holding a sign warning us about the witch. Now we see the dwarf's cottage first, which is a happy, delightful moment, which I really like, actually. And that's also where we see Snow White. I like this change, even if it shortens the mine a little bit. The next change is the one I love. It used to be that we went through a gate into the Evil Queen's castle, and then we see a potential escape in front of us through another open gate. And just when we think we might go through it, the gate crashes down in front of us, forcing us even deeper into the castle. Now that actually sounds pretty neat, really, and probably would have been fun. And that's not why I like the change so much. It's because of what we got in its place. Because now, after the 1983 change, we have the Evil Queen talking to the mirror... And then she turns around into the hag right in front of our eyes. I mean, even if it doesn't fully make sense from a story perspective, it's a really neat transformation. It's a fun surprise when she turns around. Then we have some elements of the original which were probably scarier. There were voices telling you to go back. And then at least one creepy skeleton which was really made to look like one of the ones from the movie. And there was also an area with the cobweb arch that you went through and it felt like you were going through cobwebs because there were like these little tendrils touching your head. Probably not that hygienic, but you know, it still sounds neat. And while there are still skeletons in the current ride, they don't seem as scary as some of the pictures show of that one from before. And lest I forget to mention it, by the way, the old hag used to have a poison apple that she offers a guest, an actual physical one, because she still does. But the problem was that the guests could grab that apple, and many of them took the poisoned apples home as souvenirs. wonder where I can get my hands on one of those. Hmm. Anyway, Disney ended up replacing the poisoned apple prop with a projection of an apple. So now, if you try to grab that apple, you'll get nothing but a handful of air. And finally, in the ride, there was the ending to Snow White and her adventures. In some ways, the original wins this one, but there are some neat aspects to the current version as well. The original ending to the ride still had the queen trying to push a boulder down on top of us, but the dwarfs were nowhere to be seen. And it also seemed like there was no way out. At the last moment, hidden black doors opened and led us into a dark tunnel, and we went in to the sound of the death scream of the hag behind us. And then another set of doors would open and you'd be back in the daylight of the unloading bay. No happily ever after. It just ended. That was it. That said, the ending makes me think of how cool the Indiana Jones ride is with its boulder coming down at you and you drop down out of the way at the last moment. In the current ride, you see the exit coming because that next room is lit. It's not a dark tunnel area. And so the scare just doesn't really happen in the same way. I do prefer the dwarves being present that we have now, and I like the happily ever after. I think that's neat. I just wish it didn't come at the cost of the surprise ending. But that is all Disneyland history now. So what's in store for us with the new 2020 update that's currently happening? While we don't have a complete picture, we do know some of what is changing. There will be a whole bunch of technology updates, uh, apparently some state-of-the-art audio and visual technology. There will be new music. Some neat new LED black lighting. I always love black lights, so that sounds great to me. Some new laser projections. Also a new animation system, and also an update to the outside facade in front of the ride uh, to fit better with the Sleeping Beauty castle. Yeah, it all sounds neat. We'll see how it works out. Uh, none of that really sounds earth-shattering, but it's hard to tell until we see the full extent of the change. 
The big change that, that's been revealed is that there will be a new epilogue at the end of the ride. And we have even seen some concept art. We'll get to see Snow White wake up and then have a happily ever after with Prince Charming, the woodland creatures, and the glowing castle in the background. Right now, we only get happily ever after written in a book. I've heard some griping about this upcoming change, but personally, I'm optimistic about it and looking forward to seeing what they do with it. And while I'm being optimistic about changes, maybe they'll go ahead and bring back that escape from the boulder being a bit more hidden and surprising. Hey, one can only hope, right? There are so many changes coming this year. Soon the version we currently know as Snow White's Scary Adventures will itself be Disneyland history. So what do you think about these changes we've talked about? If there was one thing you could change about Snow White's Scary Adventures, what would it be? Let me know down below in the comments. I'll always try to respond to everyone's comments as best I can. And thanks for watching. Please give it a like and share and join me tomorrow for the conclusion to my Snow White week, which will be a video inspired by the fear in Snow White. My top 10 scary moments in Disney animated movies. Please go ahead and click that red subscribe button and ring the bell. Now have a magical day and may the force be with you always.